what's up guys and welcome back to our Canucks GM mode. So in last episode we simmed half the season all the way up to the trade deadline. Um and we are actually going to make one trade despite our season record being 36, 20, and 7. We're gonna make one move just to help with a bit of a playoff run. Um and it's a kind of a small move. So basically we are gonna be sending Nicholas Poulin, who is on our NHL squad as a 78 overall, not the greatest player. We drafted him back in 2017 as a fourth round pick. He's going to be part of this trade. And then we're also going to be giving up a draft pick again because we don't need our draft picks really. We're going to throw in our second round pick. And then we're going to go to Buffalo Sabres and we're going to take back their fifth if we can. And then we're also going to take back some good player to replace Poulin and that player is going to be Austin I think his name was or Alex not Matt uh, Alex Showborn Schoenborn. he is a fourth line forward 83 overall right wing two way forward bottom six forward um, he completely fit, uh, he completely fit, um, meets the requirements of what I need as you can see he's only got a one year deal at 1.94 which is affordable for us um, so he's a purely a rental just for the playoff run. Hopefully he is a good player as you can see with his player stats From the current season. He's got 18 points. So that's pretty solid for a fourth liner He is a bit more of a physical player. I think um, but that's fine He could help us out. I think so we'll throw him into this deal as well and Then I think that should go through I might be able to get a fourth. Let's try and get a fourth actually back first before we get a fifth. Because we are giving up a second after all. So we'll throw in a fourth and see if that goes through. So will it go through? Yes, it will. So there you go. We got a nice new fourth liner for the squad. Now we got to edit our lines quickly. So Sean Barn or however you pronounce it. Or Sconeborn, I don't know how to pronounce it. He's going to go into this spot right here. Looks like he dropped to an 81 because of the trade, but he should jump back to an 83 soon. And then, yeah, our team looks way better if he go grows to an 83. So, that is the only move we're going to make here at the deadline. And, yeah, we're going to sim the remainder of the season. And hopefully we could win another Presence Trophy, maybe another Stanley Cup as well. So let's sim one month and then see where we are currently in the standings. So we'll sim all of March and go all the way up to April the 1st. So we beat the Bruins easily because they were a bad team even though they have Vasilevsky. And I looked up, uh, what was it? Um, I looked up like some of our old players and it turns out that uh, Daniel Sparks, one of the guys we drafted, he's also in Arizona. So Fiala has been injured. I didn't see how long he was injured till. It is not a good injury. I knew I should have traded for a left winger. So backer you could replace there. Yeah, that's fine. I think it was just till the end of this month, hopefully. Is Fiala is a big piece of our team. Raffle's going to be jumping into the NHL next year because he's already an 81 now. So... Um, let's send out our scout to, everywhere is like an A- minus instead for Russia. Let's go to Sweden. And we gotta go defense because we need more defensive players because our defense is getting older with like players like Troy Stetcher and Ole Olivia. And now Tom Nilsson's been injured in the AHL. We'll just replace him. A lot of injuries randomly seem to happen. He's already back. Wow, Raffle's an 82 now. He's listed as a depth forward as well, so he's definitely going to be in the NHL next year. And Boris Afinisenkov should be also in the NHL, so we're going to have to free up some roster spots during the offseason. So, Nilsson, go back into your spot. There you go. And we can go back. So, game against the Hurricanes, who we beat last year in the Seneca Finals, and we win 6 to 2. Kevin Fiala is already back. That is good news. Because we don't want to lose him too long. Because he is our top left winger. He's one of these players that we might not be able to get back soon. Because he has... This is his last year on his deal at 
we might have to release him at the end of the season um, and pick up a, well, maybe not a new left number one left winger because maybe Rafa will be higher than an 85 by then. There's a shootout loss and a win again, so we're still getting some points at least with those shootout losses. We have not lost in regulation to start this month off, so Chubasov has been injured. Another AHL guy replaced him. Looks like our AHL team is going to go into the AHL playoffs this year. We are still undefeated in regulation. We've lost two games in the shootout this month. There's another win. So yeah, we're definitely making the playoffs. Hopefully that this month help helps us to get another presence. Because if we can get another presence, that would be pretty crazy. Um, Kevin Fitzgerald, who even is this guy? 29-year-old, no thank you. He'd be like a depth defenseman, which we don't really need. There's a loss in regulation, though, to end off the month pretty much. And another win. So we are now 45 21 and 9 so basically 45 and 30 where are we in the standings and do we have a chance still to get the presence trophy or did colorado run away with it because colorado was the team that ran away with it last time or was when we looked at the standings last okay no they didn't run away they had a bit of a um, losing streak and we are one point ahead of them with two games in hand so we might be able to win another presence trophy which would cap off a great last three years, um, or last four years or more. I don't even know how to explain it. Um, so yeah, that's that. Let's take a look at our player stats just for the, before we sim the last bit of the month. So Albaline, 73 points. That's a career best for Albaline. His best season before that was like 60-something points. Noel Patrick, 61. Horvat, 60. Shifley, 53. Um, but he's got 29 goals. Uh, Fiala 45, Stetcher 40, um, Yo Levy 36, Wyman 33. Nice, the entire team's playing pretty good. Mikulowski's got 31 points in his rookie season. Um, Schoenborn, since coming over here, I think he only had like 19 points, so he put up maybe a couple goals. Nice. And yeah, the worst player that's played with us the entire time is Janus, and Janus has got 13 points, so not too shabby. Gold pending wise, Gravel's got seven shutouts, 35, 13, and 6. See, this is why this guy's our starter now. 2.22 goals against average and a 9.23 save percentage. So, despite the slow start, he's really picked it up. And then Lundberg, 10 and 8, with a, almost a 3 goals against average and a 9.03 save percentage. So, let's get the last month done and then we'll check over the standing stuff again, see if we won another presence trophy, and check the player stats. Uh, for the season as well again and we'll check also the AHL for stats and then we'll see who we're up against in round number one there's another win hopefully we can get this another presence trophy so Chubasov is back for the AHL club okay Chubasov what position did you even play I think you were maybe here no Oh, there he is, but I'll just put him in there anyways where Falk was, because Falk is an older player anyways. Game against Arizona and Thatcher Demko, who doesn't look like they're making the playoffs. And we win, and we win again. Our team's just been on fire the last little bit, but we're setting ourselves up for failure maybe in the first round. Hopefully we could get at least to the conference finals again. An OT loss and a win. So we finished the season off 49, 23, and 10, and we finished first in the conference. But did we win the President's Trophy? Because if we finished first in the conference, I think we might have won the President's Trophy again, guys. Which would be pretty crazy. Let's see, entire league. And yes, we did. We won our third President's Trophy now. Damn, I think it's our third President's Trophy. Um,. We finished with 108 points. Um, let's check our goals for per game average. We were the fourth best team in the entire league, only behind the Jets, the Islanders, and the Panthers. Um, goals against per game, we were the fifth best behind Dallas, Boston, Colorado, and the Rangers. I don't know how uh, Boston had one of the best goals against per game, but they didn't make the playoffs. They were like one of the worst teams in the entire league. Um... Power play percentage, our power play was second just behind Toronto. 
at 22.5%. Our penalty kill, though, was one of the worst. That might have been where we lost some points, 79.5%. We had six shorthanded goals. Our record on home ice, 24, 9, and 8. And then our road record, 25, 14, and 2. Last 10, 6, 3, and 1. So uh, definitely a great season here again in Vancouver. Um, let's take a look at our player stats for the regular season. So we'll start by forwards first. So leading our leader in points from the regular season was Mikhail Alvalin with 75 points in 82 games, 25 goals, 50 assists, only 12 penalty minutes, and a plus 20. Then you got Bo Horvat with 67 points, Nolan Patrick with 64 points, Mark Scheifele with 60 points, 31 goals. Fiala 53, and then after that it drops off a lot, but Wyman 38 points on that third or fourth line. Can't remember which one it was. That's why I wanted to re-sign him, because he is a good player for his amount of money. Benton 35 points, Samuelson 33, Zach a 30, Sean Borden 26. So I think he came over and at least put up like maybe 6 points or something. I don't know. Enders 22 points, McEachern 20 points is an 81 overall. That's pretty solid. Um, Backer 5 points in his 10 games, Raffle had 1 points in those 10 games he played as well. Um, defenseman, Troy Stetcher 47 points, Yua Levy 41, Mikulowski 38 in his rookie season, and he's up to an 84 now, and he's listed as a top 4 defenseman, so this guy is definitely growing great. He's probably going to be up by like, up to an 86 or something by next season, I'd s assume. Lozogren, 35 points, is an 81 overall. 29 points for Nazarov, who is now up to an 88. Janus, 15 points, and a coin had nothing in his three games. Goalies, Alexis Gravel went 39, 15, and 6, so basically 39 and 21. 2.37 goals against average in a 918 save percentage, and he also had 7 shutouts. Lundberg went 10 and 8 with the 299, like I was saying before. And a 903 save percentage. Um, Gravel had one assist as well. So that is the player stats for the NHL. Now let's quickly check the AHL, even though their season's not 100% complete yet. So Boris and Finnesankov, 68 points in 73 games. This guy's playing great. 35 goals. Brindamore, 59. Festerani, 56. He might actually be in the NHL by next season as well. Uh, Zukanov 50 points, Ruchin 49, Schneider 42, Raffle only 39 and 65. He might have been, no, he was in the NHL for a bit, but still, that's pretty good. 39 points, Haken 34, um, Elvin's 29, and so on like that. And what about goaltending? How did the youngster goaltender do? Heljenko was great. Rudder was solid. He got wins, but not a good goals against. But Heljenko, 1.96, 30, 30, 13, and 1, 9.30 save percentage, and 7 shutouts. So this guy definitely played really good as their number one, again, down there in the minors. So that is that. Let's take a look at who we're up against in round number one of the playoffs. And then that will be it for this episode. So we are up against the Calgary Flames. So once again, we have to play the Flames. Um, then you also got the Ducks and the Sharks, the Avs and the Preds, the Jets and the Stars. And then in the East, you got Tampa Bay and Toronto, Florida and Buffalo, Washington and Carolina, and the Rangers and the Islanders. So, let's take a look at what Calgary looks like now, because I think they missed the playoffs the last couple seasons. I could be wrong. So, offense, our offense is better, 92-91. to 91. Our defense is the same, 90 to 90, but our goaltending is better, 91 to 85. So let's take a look at what their lines look like. And then that will be it for this episode. So view opponents. So first line, Matthew Tichuk, 88 overall. Sean Monahan, 88 overall. And Hunter Shinkarik, 85. Two good players there, but Shinkarik's pretty weak. Then you got Goldobin, 83. Toby Sconefield, 86, and this guy's a 21-year-old. This guy's going to be good for them. That's pretty nice. And Jacob Vrana, 85. And then you got Julian Goche, 84. Harold Biggs, 83. This is another nice young guy. Emil Poya, 85. Then you got Matthias Svoboda, 
81, Frederick Goche, 84, and Paul Bintner, 82. So you got the two Goches. It's kind of funny. Defensively, Dougie Hamilton and Rasmus Anderson. Looks like, oh no, TJ Brody didn't retire. He's dropping off though. And then you got Ty Smith and Jordan Schmaltz, Thomas Schmilich, and TJ Brody. Okay. So pretty solid defensive core. And gold hitting, you got John Giles still. 85 overall, not that good. And Tony Hakkarainen, 72 overall. So not a good backup goalie. And then scratch, they have Sam Bennett, 78. I don't know why they're leaving Sam Bennett as a scratch player. That's not good for them. And then they also have Vince Molson there, 77. And Gordon Minard, who's another good young guy. So anyways, guys, that's going to do it for this episode of Urkinox GM Mode. So next episode... We'll start off the playoffs and face the Calgary Flames in round number one of the 2025-26 season. So thank you guys for watching. See you guys next time.